Hello, I'm Dennis Derrickson. I'm a professor at California Polytechnic. And for my Christmas present, I had the Nano VNA for my wife. It's a very tiny uh, vector network analyzer, and I'm using it to uh, measure some of my ham radio antennas as I prepare for the VHF UHF contest in January. So, what I've done so far is I've taken the Nano VNA right here and I've calibrated it with a short open and load and a through line at the three bands of interest the 144 megahertz band, the 432 megahertz band, and the 1296 megahertz band. So right now I have it set to the 144 megahertz band and I'm going to go measure my first antenna. So here I go. So I'm bringing my Nano VNA over to my first antenna which is a three element Yagi that I have adapted from a commercial antenna that was tuned for 156 megahertz. You can see I've added a little length here to the antennas. And now I'm going to see how well that antenna works. So I'm going to put the Nano VNA onto the input port of the uh, the antenna and you can see I have uh, this line right here, the yellow line right here is the return loss and I've got a nice almost 20 dB return loss here at the frequency of uh, 146 megahertz. There's our marker right there and so the antenna is working very well ready to go for the contest. So let me now uh, check my second antenna which is a 432 megahertz quaggy antenna. Okay, right here, this is my 432 megahertz quaggy antenna. It has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 elements. And I'm, dr I'm driving it here from a semi-rigid coax right here, but now I have to change the frequency, so I'm going to use the, uh, the, the display here to uh, recall 2, which is my 432 megahertz calibrated sweep that goes over 200 megahertz. So I'm going to plug the antenna into the uh, Nano VNA. And so I have a marker set at 428 megahertz right here. And let me change the marker to 432 where I'm interested. So it's 436. And my marker one here shows a, about a 10 dB return loss. So the antenna's working pretty well. It covers most of the 432 to 450 megahertz band, so I'm very happy with this. Notice that the display has both return loss and a Smith chart display, which is very convenient. Now I'm going to go check my 1296 megahertz antenna. So let me disconnect there and walk over to my 1296 megahertz antenna. It's the highest frequency one that I have. And here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 22 3, 24, 25 elements on this Yagi antenna. And I'm feeding it with coaxial cable here. And let me hook it up. Oh, first I have to get the, the calibration hooked up for the 432 segment, which is uh, my recall state four. And I'm at 1296 megahertz scanning 200 megahertz. This unit actually goes from uh, 50 kilohertz all the way up to 1.5 gigahertz, but you can see the signal to noise ratio isn't quite as good here when you get above one gigahertz, but still makes a reasonable measurement. Uh, this is centered at 1296 megahertz. Let's move the marker all the way over to the frequency I'll be transmitting at, which is right 1296, right, 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 excuse me, let's get that marker off. 12... 1296 is yeah, right about there. So I get about 10 dB return loss at my, uh, my antenna. So anyway, it's been a fantastic tool. It only cost me $79, and I can't, can't believe that such high performance is available in such a small portable unit. And I just want to show you uh, how, how wonderful it is to have a measurement tool that can help me align these antennas. That's my YouTube for today. Thank you.